Hello, this is video number three on uh, doing a uh, the magnetic uh, phase shift experiment on seeds. I'll show you the seed set up in a second. Uh, let's first take a look at the ferro cell. This is two pieces of optically flat glass. This is actually just a hardware ring of LEDs like you've seen LED strip lighting. And uh, in between there is just a tiny smear of uh, ferro fluid suspension. And what we're going to do is we're going to do exposing this inward shooting LED white light it's just hardware uh, rim lighting to the magnetism so we're going this for the first time in the world well of course I made many videos like this but you'll be one of the first people in the world to see the uh, reciprocation of magnetism let's uh, first turn off the lights here so we can see it then we'll get on to talking about the seeds and the phase shift. By the way, of course, it doesn't matter if the magnet is uh, square shaped, pyramidal shaped, ring shaped. Magnetic reception, uh, the reciprocating magnetic uh, hyperboloid uh, discovery copyright 11 2014 and covering the missing secrets of magnetism. Uh, it's always the same. So right now I'm using a cube magnet, but a pyramid magnet, a sphere magnet. A, uh, any shape magnet, block or otherwise, will always have the uh, same field extrapolation underneath the ferro cell. In other words, it will always look the same underneath the ferro cell. Let's zoom in. Right now we're looking at the dielectric inertial plane, and here we have either pole on either side. I'm zooming in so you could take a look. This is real time. This, like I said, this is just two lenses. Now, if you can actually see, it's unfortunate if you're actually able to have one of these in your hands, you could actually see how uh, incredible the depth of field is. It makes the best hologram in the world look like crap by comparison. But over here we have either pole where the centripetal convergent magnetism is returning to, i.e. inertia and acceleration. And of course here we have uh, the extrapolation of divergent centrifugal magnetism, which is reciprocating, and this is all processing along uh, the uh, the coherency of, uh, of the uh, crystalline lattice of the uh, hexagonal crystalline lattice of the neodymium boron, but it would be the same as a ferrite or samarium cobalt. Let's move on to either pole. You see that toroid hypertrochoid people are like what's a hypertrochoid well just think of a spirograph pattern this is nature's only way just like the old plumber's motto that water flows downhill it's the same thing with field pressure mediation the extrapolation of the loss of inertia expressed as force and motion remember force and motion and magnetism are one and the same thing 100% of the visible empirical universe is held up by magnetism, i.e. the air inside the balloon, if you will. Even the idiots of quantum mechanics and general relativity will say, well, every atom is 99.9999999% uh, empty space. Well, that's not the case. That quote-unquote empty space between the center of the nuclei and the uh, outer magnetodielectric uh, uh, sphere or skin of the atom Inside that, between the center of that supposed 99.999% empty space, is actually magnetism. However, it is magnetodielectricity because the infinitely spinning nucleus within. Right now, I'm moving the magnets. Here's either pole. Now, you can actually see the phase shift. Let me see if I can actually show you better. It's slight. I've got brighter LEDs for this. But you can actually see a blue shift here. I actually know that this right now of course you're looking at centrifugal the centrifugal and you have to differentiate out the centrifugal uh, divergent from the centripetal convergent but here you can see a blue shift you notice how this is greenish blue and over here it's reddish yellow this is the phase shift this is what animals see they're not seeing this this is a magnet but what they're seeing is they're actually navigating along the earth uh, this is what they're seeing here on uh, the uh, the south geographic pole, which is where the north uh, magnetic pole of the Earth is, is in the southern hemisphere, there in Antarctica, and this is what they're seeing at the north geographic. They're seeing a blue shift. So they're actually able to move. Imagine if you had the cryptochromes in your eyeballs that. Uh, birds and uh, some insects have. You're actually able to say, well, you know, people are like, oh, I'm lost, I'm lost. Well, you, if you would actually see, it's like, well, I know I'm headed north because I see a, uh, I see a, uh, uh, well, uh, excuse me, I see a different color shift as I'm headed north and I'm that I'm headed south. If I were headed south, uh, the geographic south, where the north's uh, magnetic. Uh, 
the southern hemisphere geographically it was where the the uh, the magnetic uh, north pole of the earth is it's inverse to the geographic the geographic and the magnetic of the earth's uh, poles are inverted you can actually see this so the earth's magnetic north pole is in antarctica so if a bird were flying south he would actually see a reddish shift in light so if you had the cryptochromes in your eyeballs and you were headed north you would actually see a blue shift, a uh, a compression. But if you're headed south, you'd start to see increasingly rarefaction. Rarefaction meaning less fr uh, uh, less frequency. I remember the more uh, the higher the frequency, the higher the higher the power. <coughs> This is also the reason why this phase shift, which occurs at a ratio of 1 to 5, the golden section, by the way, let me turn the magnet here. I said either one of those black spots is the pole of the cube magnet, but the sphere magnet looks the same, and pyramidal magnet looks the same. You're actually seeing the magnet being turned by me by, me, by hand underneath the ferro cell. Now you notice the bright white line right here in the center where the light is being drawn to. Basically you could think of the center, i.e. the dielectric inertial plane, uh, incorrectly called the block wall, which is a description, not an explanation. This bright line right through the center of the magnet, i.e. the dielectric inertial plane, is where the light is being drawn to because the light is being concentrated there. You can think of a magnet, the, the opposite of either center of either magnet, i.e. the dielectric inertial plane, is the point at which inertia and acceleration reach maximum. You can consider that like a light vacuum. Now there's been an amazing invention created by a friend of mine who also created this ferro cell. It's going to change the face of everything forever. Uh, so far as transmission and non-phase light transmission, it's going to make fi it makes fiber optic transmission look like stone age dial-up modem by comparison. Let's turn the light back on here, but that was uh, his invention, the ferro cell. Extremely simplex device. The only thing moving in that device is me moving the magnets underneath it. There is nothing in this device. It is two lenses, a smear of oil, ringed with hardware LEDs. It is that simple. So, <clears throat> by the way, for those of you who are interested, uh, remember, there's no such thing as actually superconductivity actually cast. This is not lead. I cast this myself as a bismuth ball. Uh, superconductivity is not superconductivity. It is extremely low magnetic permeability, i.e. high dielectric capacitance. And uh, using a FLIR uh, temperature uh, sensor, I was actually able to determine that, well, if I take the nature's highest uh, uh, dielectric uh, uh, High dielect highest dielectric element, i.e. lowest magnetic permeability, and place it against a high mag magnetic divergence, I would actually cause heat generation. And I've actually got earlier videos, if you want to scroll back, where you can actually see that heat with no zero input other than the mere magnetic divergence is actually heating up this bismuth sphere. Well, bismuth is actually um, depleted, like uranium depletes into lead. Bismuth is a depleted neptunium just as uh, naturally lead doesn't actually occur in nature basically all of lead in the earth is depleted uranium bismuth um, which is used as a lead substitute sometimes it's heavier than lead and this is the heaviest stable element in the earth anything that's actually heavier than this it will kill you it's radioactive unstable but all of this stuff bismuth is depleted neptunium but i'm actually able to get heat generation strictly by and i've actually proven this with my video placing it getting against the pole of the magnet and due to the extremely low magnetic permeability I actually get now i'm only talking about a few degrees so we're not talking about being able to power anything of any value but now, I don't believe in free energy, it's not just saying it's free energy, but there is the fact that magnetic divergence against low magnetic permeability. Now let me show you this and not get it near the magnet so as not to influence it. Here we have our seeds. Uh, I got red taped here for North Pole exposure, just a few hours of exposure. They got to soak for eight hours before I drain them and then I have to wash them. Uh, three times a day, sometimes four times a day, it depends, it doesn't really make any difference as long as you do it consistently. Uh, but you will notice that these uh, South Pole, which I've got labeled with green tape, seeds are going to sprout faster 
And what will happen towards the latter part of their growth, which is going to take six to seven days, is uh, that they will be full and robust, and these will look sickly and mealy. And oh my God, do they taste so different. They taste insanely different. Uh, increased growth here, stunted growth here, and that has to do with my discovery of uh, the, uh, the phase shift of uh, magnetic polarity, which I just got done showing you in uh, the feral cell, underneath the feral cell where we have, of course this is the uh, north pole of this cube magnet, uh, this is where we have rarefaction, we have uh, spatial temporal rarefaction, and on the south pole, which I don't have marked, which is right over here, we have compression. So we have rarefaction here and compression here at a phase shift of phi, of, excuse me, phi on the south pole to one on the north pole. And that uh, phase separation difference of one over phi in the spatial temporal compression and rarefaction equals alteration of the dry seeds or in plant growth or like sprouting eggs or like exposure to worms. It causes stunted growth. Now this is no hokum, no BS. Now all that magnetic crap out there is like, you know, you, you put magnets on where, I mean, those low magnetic gals, I mean, all that hokum, you know, quack sign, I mean, that is a bunch of crap. But, however, high Gauss field, neodymium iron boron, samarium cobalts, correct exposure and correct polarity at high Gauss actually can, like, uh, for exa example, exposure to centrifugal divergent magnetism from the North Pole can stunt it not only can, it does, period, ipso facto, stunt cancer growth. Um, there's, just, there's just no question about this. Rawls and Davis did uh, countless, those two books were suppressed that I showed you about in the prior videos. They were suppressed by the FDA, Food and Drug Administration. They were suppressed by the government in general. It's actually a rare book to find. Remember to contact me if you want the information on getting those books. Anyway, but that is the Pharaoh Cell. This is invention of Tim Vandarelli. And uh, he's also got a current invention that is going to change the shape of everything forever. I'm going to do a, a video on that. I'm going to show you his invention. Although I don't want to talk about it in detail because he told me not to. But it also has no moving parts, non-phase light transmission. It's going to make fiber optic uh, transmission look uh, like uh, Stone Age dial-up by comparison. But just remember, that's the explanation. And we're talking about inertia and acceleration versus force and motion. Remember what you got done seeing in the ferro cell? We just got done looking at the ferro cell. Let's take a look at it again. Let me block the light a little bit. You see this spirograph hypertrochoid pattern right there? You want to call it a spirograph, that's fine. You see that? Okay. Now, let's look at what we're looking at. This is what we're seeing. Let me compress it down a little bit. A little bit different, but basically the same thing. We have a hypertrochoid. Now it is reciprocating, it is processing. This would be a procession. In a magnet, it is all coherent uh, procession. This discovery is 11, 2014. Ken L. Wheeler uncovering the missing secrets of magnetism. This is what magnetism is. This is how a magnet works. It is the loss of inertia. This is inertia. This is force and motion. Force and motion and magnetism are two interchangeable things. Magnetism, force and motion, both the same thing. There are only two principles in the universe, force and motion and inertia and acceleration. Ultimately reducible to two things, inertia, i.e. the ether, and force, i.e. magnetism. Because the interatomic structure of every atom is magnetism, is reciprocation of the loss of inertia. The universe is that simple. Mother Nature is simple. She's not an insane cross-eyed crack whore, as quantum mechanics and general relativity want you to believe. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two. More to come. Catch you later.